So as Cliff mentioned, uh, with my portion being the research here tonight, um, I'd like to take a few minutes just to talk about uh, the state of our economy and squeeze what I can into five to seven minutes as best as I can, because there's a lot to unpack there. Um, but to help me do that, and let me try this out. I'd like to show everyone a picture, right? Maybe. You should have a strike this from the record. <laughs> yeah. I'll advance them. You can put that down. I'll just advance. Okay. So Chris will show us a picture <laughs> um, that will hopefully be able to kind of tie in um, some of these points here um, and uh, kind of give you something to, to picture there. So it'll actually be one more. So hopefully everyone recognizes this character. If you... <laughs> nice. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Drew, care, care to comment? <laughs> now, um, this is Shrek. If you haven't seen it, need a reminder. Um, Shrek is a movie about an ogre who's um, tasked with saving a princess, Princess Fiona, and um, to be married to the Lord Far Farquaad so that Shrek can return to his kingdom uh, in peace and live amongst the swamp. Now, among, while in the process um, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of rescuing the princess, um, Shrek falls in love, the two of them fall in love, and kind of a theme that Shrek and both Fiona find themselves in is a fear of being rejected by their appearance. And there's a whole plot line to this, it's a great movie, it's definitely worth a watch, but one of the famous lines in the movie is when Shrek says that ogres are like onions. Onions have layers, ogres have layers. You get it, we both have layers. Speaking to his new and trusted friend, the donkey. So I thought that that was kind of a, a great way to think about our economy in terms of our economy as It's not always the outside layer, which the main thing that we usually associate that with is the stock market. The stock market is used by people, the media, politicians, really everyone is kind of being a gauge of how things are going right now and have to be a quick glance in the health of the economy as we see it. But let me show you something to that. <clears throat> If you can see in this graph right here, this is a graph showing the value of the S&P 500 index, which is a common indice that's used in describing the health of the stock market. This dates all the way back to 1996. But to take a look at something in particular, you can see that in February of 2020 to March of 2020, March 23rd, 2020, what happened? COVID. We all remember COVID. It's still here. <laughs> but it was the story of last year, and it's still largely the story of this year. Now, that was a global economic shutdown that we ran into with that. Um, what first seemed like a shutdown for weeks turned into months. Businesses closed, people were laid off, people were furloughed. And the digital economy took off with our need to adapt to a world of quarantine and separation. But look at the recovery that happened from that. Within two and a half months from the bottom trough of that market drop, the S&P 500 returned to the point that it was at in February 19th, 2020. Around June 8th of 2020, um, it returned back to that period. And I think everyone can agree that in two and a half months, the world was not back to normal. It's still not back to normal. So it's not necessarily a great gauge of what happened and, and how quickly we were able to recover from that. Now, one of the major reasons that it was able to resurge that quickly is that the S&P 500 and the stock market in general is forward-looking. 
a lot of the valuations of the companies that are contained within this particular indice, their prices are based off the anticipation that things would recover quickly. And for the most part, the 500 companies that were there are made up of digital um, companies, some of the largest names that we've heard before. And they were able to recover quite quickly because people continue to use their iPhone, people continue to search on Google, and people continue to buy things on Amazon. However, that doesn't tell the whole picture. So what's beneath the first, first layer of the onion, you might be beginning to see through that translucent layer, um, a second layer, which is our low interest rate environment would be what you can see here. One indication of a low interest rate environment that we can look at is looking at the US 10-year Treasury bond yield, which right now is paying out 1.37%. So <laughs> on your $1,000 loan to the US government, you're going to be receiving back 1.37%. Now you look at that compared to 1981, when it was 15.84%, that same $1,000 loan to the US government would have given you back 15.84% or $158.40. If you purchased a home recently or refinanced, you might have noticed this as well. Um, if you look at the next slide, according to data compiled by the St. Louis Federal Reserve, the average 30-year fixed mortgage rate it's sitting right around two and a half percent compared to again around the mid 1980s being well north of 17 and a half percent so they say that a low interest rate environment and a common belief and well-known fact is that it's good for the borrower and bad for the lender it's also a stimulator of the economy now combine this low interest rate environment with a global pandemic that affects the supply chain and historical amounts of federal spending and federal borrowing, and you have a third layer of the onion that's, that's primed and beneath there, and that could be inflation. So if you look at the next slide, right here you can see that now, beginning in 2020, there was a sharp jump, and that CPI in August measured 4%, the highest since the late 1980s. Now there's a wide debate out there among whether this is what's called transitory inflation or more systematic and permanent inflation. But what it could mean, if it is more systematic, <clears throat> is that the interest rate environment that we were just looking at could likely flip and higher interest rates are a way of fighting that higher inflation and that rising inflation. So the point here being that beyond this initial layer of the stock market, there are other layers at place. In addition to these, we could talk about the very unique labor market that we find ourselves in, rising wages, or the variety of products that are out there and how their supply is affecting the overall global economy. But for today, I just hope that these few layers do provide some context into the fact that it's not all just about the stock market, although it might be that big green ogre that we all look at, there are some deeper layers uh, that are worth evaluating and are worth talking about. And with that, I thank you all. Thank you very much. I didn't realize how many layers Drew Bonfield has. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, Mr. Timer, can we get one minute on the clock to complete evaluation forms, please?